Ladies and gentlemen, welcome in. I wanted to go over five quick trades that I think should happen before the 2022 MLB trade deadline. These are all involving pretty big players, and I think I can make arguments for both teams why the trades should be happening. So we're going to go from least important or least impactful to most impactful. So Starting with number five, it is the Houston Astros acquiring Wilson Contreras and Ian Happ from the Cubs for a prospect package that is headlined by the Houston Astros top prospect, Hunter Brown. Now, I personally think the Cubs are going to want to split up Ian Happ and Contreras, trade them separately, maybe thinking they can get more value for them trading separate. But if you're the Astros, this, you know... The Astros are definitely a team, they're certainly going to win the West, they've played really well against the Yankees, but they understand you still have to get better. Every team's going to improve at the deadline, the Yankees are going to improve, the Astros are going to improve, every major player is going to get someone, and they have a horrible catching situation, Martin Maldonado, Maldonado one of the worst hitters. This is getting a guy that can hit. Contreras can also DH, and you're also getting an outfielder. They desperately need some outfield depth. Ian Happ signed through next year with an OPS above 800. Really solid player. Pair him. You've got Altuve. You've got Bregman. You've got Kyle Tucker. That creates a really good offense for the Houston Astros. And then from the Cubs' perspective, you're getting an elite pitching prospect. Very young Hunter Brown, along with two minimal players there. I Again, I do think the Cubs are going to want to split this up in terms of trading both Ian Happ and Contreras. Both of them are gone. There's no reason for the Cubs to keep either one of them. Happ's value is just going to keep depreciating. The Cubs are, are, the Cubs are not in a position to where they're going to contend next year. So both of these guys will be moved. Contreras in the final year of his deal. Obviously, that's why he's only worth the nine total trade value. But that is my number five trade that needs to happen. Moving on down to number four. It is the Tampa Bay Rays being buyers. But buyers mainly for the future. Trading for the young catcher uh, Sean Murphy, who has three years left on his contract of arbitration after this year, and Frankie Montas, who signed through next year, I believe. They're going to give up a really good prospect haul. That is really four good prospects going over to the Athletics. If I'm the Rays, I'm thinking I have Wander Franco signed to a massive extension You've got Tyler Glass now hopefully coming back healthy next year. You know, you've had a few breakout players. Arosa Reina's a, a really good young looking player. Yandy Diaz is a really good young. McClanahan started the All-Star game. Get, the, getting two more players of elite caliber. Sean Murphy, you need an elite catcher. Mike Zanino, he had a fluke year last year where he was an All-Star. Other than that, he cannot hit. Get Sean Murphy, who signed for three more years after this year, Frankie Montas, to help fortify that pitching rotation, and they're going to be contenders in the East next year. Franco comes back healthy. We expect him to be a superstar type player, of course. Uh, this could be a great deal for the Rays. And then for the Athletics, I think you got to move Montas. He had an injury that kind of they kind of dodged it. He ended up starting pitching three in innings. I think the only reason the Athletics did that was to showcase that he's healthy. They're trying to rush him back, and they're like, you know, we want to trade and we want to get value for him. So they bring Montas back and let him pitch three innings. And then trading Sean Murphy, it does make sense. I understand people say he still has three years left on his deal, but if the Athletics are looking forward and they're saying, we're probably not contending next year, we're probably not contending the year after that, they have the ballpark issue where they're trying to get a new ballpark. I think the Astros are trying to lay it out to where they're going to be contenders the first year of their new ballpark, which may not come for another four or five years. Personally, uh, you know, that is a pretty far away. But overall, I just think the Athletics know they're not going to contend next year. And Sean Murphy's value is only going to depreciate because his contract is going to be less and less. Right now, you can trade him three and a half very affordable years 
and this would be a great deal for the Rays and certainly a blockbuster. Moving down to my number three trade, it's going to be the, this is the probably the most obvious one, the Yankees acquiring Luis Castillo. We know the Yankees are trying to get their hands on Juan Soto, but if they can't, they certainly need to fortify that starting rotation. They certainly need another elite arm to go along with Garrett Cole, especially with the uncertainty surrounding Luis Severino getting shut down. He hadn't pitched in over two years. Nestor Cortez hasn't pitched this much in a while. Jamison Tyone's been injured before. He's slowing down. Montgomery is nothing more than a four or five starter. You need to solidify that rotation. If you can't get Juan Soto, go out, get Luis Castillo. Great option. You get him through next year as well on a very affordable deal. And I have the Rays getting a number of prospects, including Peraza, Austin Wells. I think that's what it's going to take. I don't think the Yankees can get away with trading for Castillo for just like Peraza. I also think it's going to have to be either Dominguez or Wells. And I don't think the Yankees want to give up Dominguez in a trade for Castillo. They would certainly give up Dominguez and Volpe and everyone for Juan Soto, in my opinion. But for Castillo, he's only got a year and a half left on his deal. He's a pitcher. The question is, does Castillo get bid up because he's going to be wanted by a lot of clubs. He's healthy. He's been pitching really well. Young. Signed through next year. Checks all the boxes for a really elite number two pitcher. This is a move. That, and then the Yankees, on top of that, could also do other moves as well. Trading for an outfielder. Trading for a really good relief pitcher. Because they would still have a lot of a talent left in their farm system potentially to trade. So that also opens that option, but this would be my number three trade that needs to happen. And most people right now are projecting if the Yankees don't trade for Juan Soto, they will trade for Luis Castillo from the Reds. Moving to my number two trade, this is where kind of gets a little fun. It is the Mets acquiring Shohei Otani uh, from the Angels for, you know, three really good prospects, but the main headliner, it is Francisco Alvarez, the number two overall prospect in baseball. Now for the Mets, this makes complete sense. That with their new owner, they want to overtake the Yankees. They want to be the number one draw. What better way to do it than to acquire Shohei Otani? Also, with Otani being a pitcher, the Mets' current situation, if they do end up re-signing Jacob deGrom, it would behoove them to possibly employ a six-man rotation next year. If you have Otani, you have DeGrom. De DeGrom's been known to get injured. Resigning him is a massive risk anyways. And you also have Max Scherzer not getting any younger. If you trade for Otani, I know it's down the road, deploy a six-man rotation due to Scherzer's age, keep his innings down, keep DeGrom's in innings down. Obviously, Otani, you're not going to pitch him every fifth day if he's also a hitter. So keep his innings down a little bit. Uh, could you imagine a three-headed monster like that? And then you also have Otani hitting with Pete Alonzo and Lindor, uh, McNeil, and all the others. So that would be a crazy trade. And then if you're the Angels, the Angels are probably not going to do this. But from a baseball sense, it makes sense to trade one and a half years worth of Shohei Otani for a super franchise, you know, for a future franchise level catcher, Francisco Alvarez, who's the best hitting catching prospect, you know, since we don't know when. He's the number two overall prospect in all of baseball right now. And you're also getting a young starter and a young third baseman as well, both prospects. So three prospects you're getting back, two top 100 guys. Um, if I'm the Angels, I, you know, you can't do it because of how, you know, Otani sells the tickets, we get it, but if you're a fan, and an Angels fan, you just, you would be dying for a trade like this. I just, you know, the, the Angels in their current situation with Anthony Rendon, it makes no sense. You've got Rendon and Trout locked into monster deals. If I'm the Angels, I mean, I would trade Otani now, and I would, I would think about trading Mike Trout in the offseason. I understand Mike Trout brings in revenue, he brings in ticket sales and all that, but from a pure baseball sense, your farm system is terrible. You have horrible contracts. You need to somehow reverse this and get an influx of young talent. And this is the way you do it. You get a superstar young catcher. Um, and then I, I would really consider it if I were the Angels. And for the Mets, obviously, you would re-sign Otani uh, after next year. And the team that trade if, if somebody trades for Otani, they're going to have an inside track or at least have a possible scenario where they could re-sign him 
I will say, I don't know how much Otani would like playing in New York, even if it's with the Mets. Uh, he seems like a particular guy. I'm not sure he would like that. They would have to work that out before the trade, of course. But that's just a, a unique thing there. And then my number one trade that needs to happen, uh, the most realistic thing I feel like if you're the Nationals, it's trading Juan Soto to the Padres and getting a massive haul back. And this is actually the Nationals not trading of any, any of Patrick Corbin's deal because like, if you're talking about the Nationals, why not just embrace the rebuild? Corbin's only signed for two more years anyways. You're not going to need the money Eat the Corbin contract so you can get better elite prospects and you're basically taking everyone from the Padres, young, you know, controllable outfielder, Trent Grisham, Hassel, you know, one of their top hitting prospects, actually like a top 30 prospect in baseball, the outfielder, Mackenzie Gore, a potential future ace, he's a really young, good young pitcher, and C.J. Abrams, headliners, a franchise shortstop, along with two other prospects. So you're getting, this is the type of haul you want back for Juan Soto, and then also Josh Bell, although probably not including Josh Bell, this was not my trade. I just got it. I would say just for Juan Soto straight up, and then you could trade Josh Bell, you know, somewhere else and get a prospect back for him. Why would the Padres do this? Simple. It's Juan Soto, and also in this deal, you wouldn't have to take on any of Corbin's money. You've already got that really bad Eric Hosmer contract. Theoretically, you would be able to re-sign Juan Soto and pair him and Tatis Jr. for the next decade together. And you've also got Manny Machado as well. That would sell tickets. That would be very marketable. So I think the Padres have the most to offer. This would be a crazy, if you're going to trade Juan Soto, you got to get a haul like this back for him. And this would be my number one trade that needs to happen for the 2022 MLB trade deadline. But guys, that is going to do it for this video. Make sure you follow me on Twitter. Link to that's always in the description.